But next up, I'd like to introduce Javier um, Juarez from the Latino Policy Institute. He's a researcher with them, and he's got a few words. He was invited, the Teamsters luckily secured him to come here. Um, and I'd like to bring him up to, to say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to thank one of the best jobs that I've had since I graduated high school. But I'm the definition of the American dream. My dream began when that Greyhound bus dropped me off over there by the Dunkin' Donuts Center at the age of 10. Me and my father came with nothing but the clothes on our back, and we began our American dream. I was put into elementary school, Ashwood Highlands, where I was Luckily, luckily enough, able to learn how to speak English fairly quickly, rose to the ranks to middle school, and finally graduated high school at Cranston East in 2007. After graduation, it was very tough for me to continue my education, not only because I found out that I was undocumented, but I knew the realities of being an immigrant and race and having that pressure to raise your whole family out of that financial distress. We don't have trust funds. We have real debt, mortgage, uh, the electricity, gas. Luckily, I was able to find some work and I was meant to just save my money and help my family. In 2012, President Obama signed an executive order where he let DACA defer action for childhood arrivals to let, the co to, to let them contribute to the country that they call home. That was a game changer for me. I was able to get a driver's license. I was able to drive to work. I was able to get a work authorization and get a decent paying job with a 401k and, a, and insurance and benefits, something that I've never had, something that my parents never had. I was able to return to school, went to Community College of Rhode Island, graduated, transferred to a four-year institution, Rhode Island College, last May, and I was lucky enough to get a scholarship to Brown University to continue my studies and to fight of us, the immigrant community here in Rhode Island and nationwide. And I want to help them. I want to help my community. You know, JFK once said, not ask what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. And we're here, we're asking, hey, what can we do to help? Let me contribute through taxation, through social movements, through uh, economic uh, contributions to our states, to our cities, to our uh, country overall. So I'm very lucky uh, to have this opportunity to speak on behalf of those 800,000 people that have been ignored and now are under threat because tomorrow uh, the president will make a uh, deciding uh, result on this DACA uh, debacle that has been happening for the last week. So to those, I say that we're here for you. Uh, their anxieties, uh, and problems that you have at home because of this uh, issue that has uh, arised this week. We're here for you guys, so please contact me. Make sure that you know that you're not alone. Uh, since last November, I have taken the responsibility to speak on behalf of those people who believe they have no voice. <coughs> and again, I am happy uh, that I'm here and be able to do that today. Uh, to leave you guys, before I leave you guys, I wanna just say, uh, I wanna leave on a quote by Cesar Chavez. He once said in 1984, doing a similar rally as this one, you can't uneducate the person who has learned to read. You cannot humiliate those people that feel pride. You cannot, you cannot oppress those people that are not afraid anymore. So we're here today to express our feelings towards uh, the change that we're looking for, the social change that we have. So I thank you all uh, for standing here with us and uh, thank you for having me. Thank you guys.